Let's open this photo right here. I'm going to open it in develop mode. So there are some obvious problems with this image. First off, we have uh, tilting going on. So I have my develop tools here on the left of my screen and I just go to geometry. This will open the geometry pane. And basically what I need to do is first fix the tilting that's going on by going to the rotate and straighten tab here and just move the slider to the left. I'll use the grid that I see on my screen to sort of try to fix the horizon line. And I see, I would say that's pretty good. So it's the horizon line is kind of exactly in between this line of squares right here. Okay, so that's good. And I think what I also want to do is actually I want to, the boat here in the center of my photo, it's a little bit far away or it kind of gets lost in the massive uh, image. And so I'm thinking, what if I can get rid of this, um, these flags that are here, maybe the buoy flags that are happening here on the right, Maybe I can transform this photo and, and make it a vertical photo, portrait photo, to have the, the, the massiveness of the sky, of the ocean, but also try to have the boat uh, center and in focus. So I'm going to crop it. So I would say first two steps, always make sure that your line of the horizon is straight and then crop. Cropping will allow you to establish what's important in your image, just start moving this like that, moving the edges right here until I can, and obviously that's too, it's a bit too long, so I'm just going to cut it like that. And we're going to see how this looks. So maybe I'll bring it a bit more in, a bit closer in. And so as you can see, this is a pretty, it's a pretty dramatic editing that we're applying here, but it might give us some really good results. So once that's done, I'm going to go back to tune right here so that I can keep going and all of my settings here will be applied. So on the top left, I'm going to go to the tune tab and that's how we have it, right? So I'm really happy with that. But I'm gonna, I, th I see that the boat is a little bit to my left, so I'm gonna move it a little bit to the right. So I'm gonna go back to the geometry tab and I'm just going to move my square, my cropping square. I'll go back to tune and that feels a bit better. Maybe I'm gonna even incorporate more of the ocean instead of the sky, see where that takes me. I like that. It's a bit, it's not as uh, symmetrical or, you know, the line is not in the middle of the photo, but the ocean all of a sudden seems massive and that's really cool. Okay, so what is um, obviously what something else we can do here now that we've covered geometry, um, we've covered cropping, is to go over lighting, right? And what you would typically do is since my photo, the ocean is pretty dark, um, I would try to raise the shadows or fill light, as you can see in the general tab here in develop mode. So if I pull up my fill light, you will see that unfortunately, the sky is also being selected. And that's not really what we want. We just want to raise um, the exposure of the ocean. So the easiest thing we can do to achieve that, so I, could, I could also increase the exposure of the entire image, but again, I started losing that beautiful orange of the sky. So, oh, by the way, whatever you edit on here on the sliders on the left, if you want to go back, just remember to hit the reset button right here on the left with these two arrows, and that will reset everything back to how it was. So let's go over AI masking. The cool thing about AI masking is like, I don't want to select this guy. I want to select 
kind of everything but this guy, but because of how the tools operate, I am actually going to click on AI masking and select this guy. And ACDC does a great job at selecting only this guy and you'll see the overlay red. Um, whatever selection you make, ACDC by default is gonna put a red overlay on top of it. You can change the color of that overlay right here where you see this orange bar, but this is good. And what I want, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to invert this mask. Okay. So once you select an AI masking, could be subject, could be background, could be sky, this palette at the bottom will appear where you can alter your mask, right? So because we don't want to affect the sky, what I'm going to do is I'm going to invert the mask. Inverting the mask will obviously invert everything that is not selected will become selected. So this button right here, you will see it says invert the currently selected mask. And if I click on it, now what I have selected is only the ocean, the boat, and not the sky. So let's try to bring the exposure up just on that selection. I'm going to hide my mask by clicking right here, this square here, and I'm going to bring exposure up. And now we can see all of that nice texture of that sunset ocean. And my uh, sky is not selected at all, not affected at all, which is exactly what we want. So I can also add more saturation to the ocean, bring those that purple blue, more contrast, less contrast. And this is just goes to your liking, you know. There's no real answer on how much I should increase the exposure on this ocean. Obviously, this doesn't, this starts looking bad because it starts losing all of its, its natural qualities of the scene. So if I just bring it back a little, that's it. And so this is how our image was before and how it is after. I'm only affecting what I've selected. Now, I can take this a step further. You, if you go back to your general tab, you will see that you have your classic contrast, saturation, vibrance, clarity sliders, so that you can affect your entire image. But my suggestion is to start thinking about your photo as how can I direct people's eyes into what I want them to look at or what I think is important in this photo. And so, for example, vignetting becomes sort of a classic tool that is available here in develop mode. If you go to the left, you will see this post crop vignette tab right here. I can expand on it and I can add vignetting so that I can add some darker areas right in the corner of my photo to bring the attention more to the center. And so that can be a really helpful way to give the give your photo like this nice final touch. However, something else we can do is in what I encourage you to do in, while you're editing is to work with radial masks to incorporate the same the same idea behind vignetting, but it becomes a lot more flexible. So if I go to the plus um, button here, I can add a new mask, and if I add the radial gradient mask, you will see this circle, this radial will appear, right? And by default, it'll select everything that's outside the circle. Now I can modify the circle however I want it by dragging it up and down, left and right, etc. So my typical, your typical vignette would be some sort of like this, right? But I want to bring this kind of like more like this, right? I want to have a big difference between how the light transitions from the bottom of my image to the center. And so my vignette needs to be kind of bigger. But if I leave it like this and let's say I start reducing the exposure 
it'll start looking kind of fake, not so good. So what can I do is let's go back. I'll show my mask and I'm going to add a, a lot of feathering. Okay. So feathering will make the transition between what's selected to what's not selected a bit softer. I'm just going to go very strong on my feathering, bring it to the max. And I'm actually going to increase this a little. And now I'll hide my mask and I'll bring the exposure down. And now you can see that all of a sudden our eyes are drawn to the boat much more. And you can see that there's actually more light in the center of my image and it doesn't feel like I'm vignetting it. So that's key. Now, when you start doing editing and you're masking like that, don't be afraid of going back to the general tab because my photo is starting to look a little dark. So I can just go ahead and increase the general exposure of all my image of my image like that while maintaining the edits that I did with masking. So this is how our photo looked originally and how it looks now.